From the Samsung Production Studios in the heart of Hazleton, Pennsylvania, it's your News 13. Brought to you by SSP TV and the Standard Speaker. Residents and business owners think it's a great idea, and the city is definitely on board and making moves to install eyes in the sky in high crime areas. The next step towards security cameras in Hazleton, our top story on News 13 for this Wednesday. Good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Kathy Bazinski. It was for the mean streets and the problem neighborhoods of Hazleton with the goal of making them safer. Christina Papa rode along as Chief Frank DeAndrea showed vendors the hot spots where a new and improved security camera system will be placed place to deter crime. They boarded the bus so they could get ready to make their bid. Chief DeAndrea took several vendors interested in submitting a request for proposal or RFP for the bid on wireless security cameras on a ride around Hazleton this morning. Citywide surveillance is uh, something that's become very popular over the past, um, I'd say, five or six years. Um, so I think that, you know, Hazleton is definitely on a, on a good path. Kratos Public Safety and Security's Ryan Mello was one of the nine bidders on the bus. He'll be competing with vendors to create the best security plan for the Hazleton area. The city has set aside a little over $70,000 for the project, but Chief DeAndrea plans to have well over $100,000 for the entire project. They're trying to maximize the efficiency of the system uh, in terms of cost and, and deployment. But the idea for a better camera system isn't new. Chief DeAndrea has had requests from concerned Hazeltonians since he first came into office. Hey, Chief, what about cameras for Altershire? And I thought, what about cameras for the whole city? Police already monitor over 40 cameras around Greater Hazelton. Chief DeAndrea hopes the cameras already set up around the area will be added to the new system. This camera behind the Minsec building allows police officers to keep a watchful eye on this parking lot behind the building. But by the time the end of September comes, bidders should have proposals ready that will allow 10 to 15 more cameras to be added to the Hazleton area. Cameras will be set up on Alter, Broad, Church, Poplar and Wyoming streets first, but these systems will grow in time. But with systems today, it's, it's very expandable. So, uh, you know, really it's it's uh, you know, there's no limit necessarily to how many you could have out there. Folks can view the proposal on the city's website now that the vendors have taken the tour. Chief DeAndrea promises the first cameras will be installed on Alter Street. All the cameras should be set up before December. Christina Papa, News 13, Hazleton. On well, Monday night's fatal shootings at a township meeting in Monroe County has municipalities all across Pennsylvania looking at ways to heighten security. A disgruntled resident of Ross Township went to the regular meeting of supervisors there and opened fire, killing three people, including a supervisor from a neighboring community. Now, the Pennsylvania Association of Township Supervisors is calling for across-the-board planning and training for what to do if a shooter takes aim at a public government meeting. The association says a number of townships statewide recently completed training exercises regarding threats from a shooter, but acknowledges it's a difficult circumstance for which to prepare. Also says that township officials make decisions almost every day that have the potential to cause controversy. The association says it's now looking at security changes implemented in Pennsylvania following the elementary school shootings in Connecticut as possible safeguards. Well, the watch is over for Luzerne County's self-proclaimed watchdog. As of this morning, Walter Griffith is no longer the Luzerne County controller. While Griffith and his legal counsel aren't saying anything, Griffith's abrupt resignation on Tuesday and his withdrawal from the November ballot in the controller's race could be a sign that he's taken a plea agreement for felony wiretapping charges filed against him. You see Griffith at his preliminary hearing on those charges a couple of months ago. Court action scheduled for today and the case was canceled. The state attorney general's office charged him with illegal legally recording three conversations without the consent of at least eight people. Charges are third-degree felonies, which carry a maximum sentence of seven years in prison plus fines. A Griffin's deputy will fill his position until a replacement is named under Luzerne County's home rule charter. If county council doesn't select Griffith's replacement in 60 days, the county judges will nominate a replacement. As Schuylkill County Coroner, he's handled some of the toughest criminal and accidental cases, and he believes they've helped him prepare for a bigger role in government. Dr. David Moreland has announced he's running for the Republican nomination for congressman in the 17th District. Moreland says as a physician and medical scientist, he's staunchly pro-life and against President Obama's health care initiative. He also opposes the president's stance on the environment, which he believes is keeping jobs out of the region. One is the natural resources beneath our feet. 
and the, President Obama has declared war on coal. And I think if we could have a, a reprieve there, a truce of some sort, that we, the natural resources in the district would provide jobs for many people. And again, I'm on this fact-finding mission. I hope to meet with uh, industry leaders to see what the needs are to jumpstart the economy and get more people back to work. First-term Democratic Congressman Matt Cartwright currently represents the 17th District, which was recently created and is far-flung and stretches from Scranton and Wilkes-Barre to Stroudsburg and Bethlehem and includes most of Schuylkill County. Well, the new home industry across the country finally bouncing back after the recession, and that pumps dollars into local economies. But as Matthew Petrillo tells us, that's not happening everywhere, and especially in Schuylkill County. Nationally, new home sales rose just above 8% in June when compared to last year. But that's not the case here in Schuylkill County. New home sales here rose to just above 3%, says Wendy Noor, president of the Schuylkill County Board of Realtors. There's not a whole lot of new developments in the county, mm -hmm. so that's probably why. The market looks way different than it did just a few years ago, largely because of the recession. New home sales in Schuylkill County have been taking a deep dive since 2008 and finally reached a low point in 2011 when just five new homes were sold. To date, nine new homes have been sold this year alone. It's the fastest pace of growth in five years, and Noor says it's a sign the housing market is recovering. And just as important, she says, it's a sign the American dream is still alive and kicking. Getting loans today is a lot harder than it used to be, so... You know, mm -hmm. some of them don't have the funds, some of them don't have the credit scores. So there are a lot of rentals, but I still think that the dream is to own your own home in, in the United States. Now, even though existing home sales here in Schuylkill County are not keeping up with the national level, when he says the outlook is hopeful. But we do have a positive outlook here in Schuylkill County for future home sales. Housing accounts for a fifth of the United States economy. And while new home sales are just a fraction of the market, they have a greater economic impact than pre-owned homes. When you buy a home, it isn't just you're buying a home. You're going to the local uh, hardware stores. You're purchasing from them. You're going to the local lenders. You're going to the local businesses and giving them business. When you have people moving into the area, it just boosts the economy. Matthew Petrillo, News 13, Ashland. And still ahead on News 13, not very much of a first full week of August. We'll tell you when to dodge the showers in News 13 weather. But first, a fun treat courtesy of the good guys for some kids who were involved in one scary accident on the interstate. Coming up on News 13. It was horrible. Just about two weeks ago, a bus crash on I-81 left more than two dozen children headed for a day of fun, scared and injured. The day campers from the Hazleton Y never made it to a pool in Pottsville, but as Matthew Petrillo tells us, some local officials pitched in to make things all better. Some serious business often takes place here at Hazleton City Hall, but today it's a playground for the nearby YMCA. Hazleton Chief of Police Frank D'Andrea hosted a day of fun here for the victims of the I-81 bus accident. Some families had one or two children on the bus on the 26th of July. I had 80 kids on that bus because these are all my kids. So we called around the community asking who could give the children a special day. He had some of his police force display their equipment. Well, we've seen a dog and well, a canine, and we've seen like a lot of uh, door smasher and a just door spreader. Oh, it's really cool. It's awesome. A local pizza joint donated lunch for the children, and the fire department showed off their trucks. <laughs> Great jump, Ryan. Good job. Now, Chief D'Angelo went on vacation just a day after the bus accident, and he says by hosting this fun day for the kids, he's hoping to give them their own vacation. Many of those families don't get a trip to Disney. They don't get a trip to the Jersey Shore. To these kids, one or two trips to a pool is what their summer is all about. But for these kids, it's all about moving on. Little eight-year-old Zoe Pesco remembers exactly how the crash felt. I said, oh gosh, and, and I'm like, that felt horrible. I seen all them people on the bus and it was scary. I was thinking that all my friends were, 
we're okay. Now, while today was a day of fun at City Hall for the little ones, lots of fun. Chief DeAndrea was able to plan a special day for the children to head to the JFK pool in Pottsville, where the bus was heading before the accident. A local law firm, HGSK, is funding the trip. I remember summer uh, camp, and that I look forward for my trip to the pool. We didn't have you know, more, many pools around. So this is very important for the kids, and we're happy to be able to facilitate uh, that outing. It's going to be a fantastic day. Matthew Petrillo, News 13, Hazleton. So great to see all those smiles on their faces. Time now for our regional weather. From the National Weather Service, checking the radar. It's one of those pop-up storm kind of days, and that's the cycle we're going to be in for the next few days. Good for the flowers and veggies, though. Our creative condition a little bit more about blue skies and sunshine. It's by Pierce Danko, a student at West Hazleton Elementary Middle School, and he says it's a beautiful summer day, and he's out camping with his family, which it looks like they have a really sweet camper, too. Now let's take a look at News 13 weather from the National Weather Service for Greater Hazleton for tonight. Guess what? Scattered showers with thunderstorms also possible during the overnight. Low getting down to 66 degrees. And for Thursday, mostly cloudy with showers likely, possibly a thunderstorm high up to 77. Scattered showers and thunderstorms during the overnight again with a low around 63. Heading over to Schuylkill County for tonight's showers and thunderstorms likely right through the evening and in the overnight with a low around 65. And for Thursday, cloudy, guess what? Showers likely, possibly a thunderstorm, a high up to 81 degrees though. Chance of showers and thunderstorms at night with a low around 65. Well, it seems like only yesterday that I reported a story about some quadruplets in Greater Hazleton who were celebrating their first birthday. Boy, how time flies. Today, Christina Papa joined the West Hazleton Quads, who just turned sweet 16. Happy birthday. <laughs> birthday. <laughs> Happy birthday. West Hazleton quadruplets Jonathan, Morgan, Kyle, and Rebecca Kashak celebrated a milestone birthday late last month. The quadruplets celebrated their 16th birthday on July 22nd. This birthday was a little quieter than their first. That's too funny that I found their Don't, book from their first birthday. We had them at Lehigh Valley, and shortly after I delivered, the local media came around, and, and the, the newspaper from Hazleton came down, the TV channels came down. When the quads were little, Mom Karen could hardly tell really them apart. Did. She would mark pictures and kept name bracelets on them, but a lot has changed since then. Now they're all over the place. Everybody has a job. Everybody has outside obligations. They're very active in their school as well as in their church. So it's very, very busy. The oldest, Jonathan, keeps busy with his landscaping job and wrestles on Hazleton School District's team. The quads call Morgan the peacekeeper of the group. She works at a local grocery store and plays in the school band. While Kyle, the helper, is off working hard with the local West Hazleton Fire Department. And for the youngest, Rebecca, she calls herself the caretaker of the group. She keeps busy playing field hockey. For the crew, 16 is just another number, except for that whole license thing. Driving. Driving. And who's going to be the first one to get a car? More me. 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 <laughs> I have the most money. Yeah. Wow. The siblings will be going into 10th grade this year. They say most of their friends don't even know their quadruplets. Towards the end of the year, it's like, what are you doing? And I'm going home with my brothers and sisters. And I'm like, you have brothers and sisters? And it's like, yeah, I'm part of quads. And everyone's like, Pew. And while it's still a while away, most of them hope to go to Penn State University. But for now, Mom Karen just wants them to finish their daily chores been an amazing, amazing adventure, and it's while it's challenging, it's very rewarding all at the same time. Christina Papa, News 13, West Hazleton. And happy birthday to them. Let's check the winning midday lottery numbers. Good luck if you played the Daily, 596, the Big Four, 7259, Quinto, 92059, and the Treasure Hunt, 9, 10, 13, 19, 29. Hope you won. Good evening, everyone, and here's tonight's social news. First night, happy 51st birthday to John Metz. This news comes with love from moms, sisters, brothers, nieces, and nephews. Tonight's Talk of the Town report the Shenandoah Community Watch will be holding their 2013 Kids Fun Day, August 10th at Bicentennial Park. It is a family-friendly event, and all are welcome to attend. The SCW meets the third Wednesday of the month in the Borough Hall. And finally, the Twin County Lions will be holding a chicken barbecue Sunday, August 11th at the CYC in Weston. They will be serving from 11 a.m. until 4 p.m. or they are sold out. That's tonight's Talk of the Town.
News 13 would like to send sincere condolences to the family and friends of these recently departed. Joseph T. McAndrews of West Hazleton. Mass is Saturday at 10 a.m. in the Annunciation Parish at St. Gabriel's Church. Friends may call Saturday from 9 to 10 a.m. The Joseph A. Moran Funeral Home is in charge of arrangements. Joan Ann Budgen, formerly of Exeter Township. Mass is Saturday at 11 a.m. in the Chapel of Resurrection in Muhlenberg Township. Agnes Mitchell, formerly of Hazleton. Funeral is Friday at 9 a.m. from the Frank J. Bonin Funeral Home. Friends may call Thursday from 6 to 8 p.m. Rose J. Lotwick, formerly of Mahanoy City. Funeral is Saturday at 9.30 a.m. from the James P. Hawney Funeral Home. Friends may call Friday from 6 to 9 p.m. Gloria T. Kakalisic of Hazleton. Mass is Friday at 9.30 a.m. in the Queen of Heaven Parish Our Lady of Grace Church. Friends may call at the church from 8.30 to 9.30. The Joseph A. Moran Funeral Home is in charge of arrangements. Joseph Nika of Hazleton. Arrangements are private and under the direction of the Turnbach Funeral Home. And Stella S. Colina of Jetto. Arrangements will be announced by the McHugh Wilcheck Funeral Home. Tonight's obituaries have been brought to you by the Smilax Floral Shop located on 15th Street in Hazleton. For delivery to all local funeral homes, call 570-454-0111. And by Doves of White, serving Schuylkill and surrounding counties, call 570-205-1597. SSP TV Sports on News 13 with Fred Barletta Jr. Well, we've documented that Russ Kanzler has been in a little bit of a slump, actually the worst we've seen in his entire professional career, and it's coinciding with his team, the Indianapolis Indians, who had a huge lead. They just can't seem to win games anymore. Well, it was more of the same last night. As you take a look, they were uh, knocked off by the Louisville Bats, 6-4, the final in this one. Now, Kanzler did not start in this game. He did get a pinch hit appearance in the eighth inning. Now, you look at it, and on the surface, you say, uh, same for Kanzler, 0 for, 0 for 1 in this case. I can tell you, I saw the at-bat. He hit the ball right on the screws, but it was a hard line drive out to uh, the left fielder. So uh, maybe I'm trying to look for the silver lining. But uh, he did hit the ball hard last night. Maybe both he and his Indianapolis team could finally turn it around. We'll wait to see. The Rail Riders won a wild one last night. They outlasted Syracuse. Final there is 7-6. to six. And uh, then in the nightcap, Syracuse in a little bit calmer of a game. They nipped Scranton Wilkes-Barre 3-2. So they split the double dip up at Muzik last night. No splits in the Lehigh Valley game last night. 4-1 winners over Charlotte. Cody Overbeck, he went yard. Two for four in the game. So uh, he is in the top ten in home runs in the International League. So we'll see uh, how he goes down the stretch here in the month of August. There's your schedule. All of the same games. So uh, that's the way it goes. Major League Baseball. Yankees are looking woeful. Remember, the White Sox came into this series losers of ten in a row. They got the perfect tonic. Bring the Yankees in. Phillies, they beat the other Chicago team, but uh, that's not saying very much. The Pirates got a walk-off win last night. They'll try to do it again. The Mets in Colorado and Tampa Bay. Tell you what, they uh, did not get off to a good start on the road trip. They jumped out to a 1-0 lead. Then the pitching, well, uh, that kind of went south on them last night, and they lost. We'll see what happens tonight. Now, we'll continue our interview with uh, Mark Tompkin. He's the beat writer for the Tampa newspaper, follows the Rays as good as anybody. And my concern was, well, you know, the pitching. It's all about the pitching and defense with Tampa. Matt Moore on the disabled list. He's been one of the mainstays. What's that all looking like? When can we expect him back? That's definitely the way it's being portrayed right now, Fred. And, and you know, the, the idea that he felt a little bit of discomfort pitching in New York the other day. I mean, they went as far as saying that if this were September, they'd probably keep him out there and keep him pitching. You know, so that certainly gives you a sense it's not very severe. An MRI came up clean from what the team told us. So, you know, they have four off days in a 12-day period. It allows them to go to a four-man rotation. They were probably going to do that anyway and bump Roberto Hernandez to the bullpen. So instead, they take advantage of that opportunity. They put more on the disabled list. Uh, feel like they can get through the next two weeks without him, and then they're telling us that he should be back right on or shortly thereafter, August 13th, which would be his eligible day. And that's a significant day, too, because from that point on, the Rays will have, I believe, it's 48 games left and only two days off. So they really you know, will have to kind of gear up from that August 13th going forward and to kind of grind it out to the rest of the season. So if they can you know, miss him for two weeks now, which really is at the most two starts, 
and get him back and healthy and effective and pitching as well as he has been, it would certainly be well worth it. That's a big piece of the puzzle. They need Matt Moore healthy. Need him down the stretch, just like when David Price came back, so we will see. We thank Mark Tompkin for taking some time and uh, giving us a Rays report. We'll continue with that as the Rays uh, head down the stretch once we get closer to September. Tonight's sports is brought to you by Mountain Speedway. Here's a look at this weekend's action. It's going to be busy. The racing will begin at 6, so plenty of action this Saturday. Just $10 for grandstand admission. Kids under 10 are free, and if you're active military or a senior, you get a $2 discount. There's the website and the phone numbers. You can call them and get all the information on the excitement of racing down at Mountain Speedway. And here's what our media partner, The Standard Speaker, is working on for tomorrow's edition. Members of Casa for Children will meet with members of the Spanish-speaking community and regional leaders tonight. You can read all about what happened in the Thursday edition of The Standard Speaker. Programming reminder for News 13 viewers in the Greater Pottsville area. News 13 has doubled its commitment to serving Greater Pottsville with two opportunities to watch News 13. Comcast subscribers can now watch us at 8 o'clock and at 10 o'clock Monday through Friday. News 13 now in Greater Pottsville, local and loving it. Plenty more news and information headed your way on News 13. It was a day of fun that went terribly wrong, but the HPD tried to make it up to some little bus accident victims. That story and much more news when the 13 crew comes right back.